Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from BlenderRender.com. This is the intro video to a series that I'm making for my friends in the 360 VR Video Professionals group on Facebook that's all about rendering 360 video and panoramas from Blender. So this series will pretend that you know nothing about Blender at all. And also on that note, I'm not going to be teaching you the basics of modeling or UV mapping or some of the stuff that you would normally need to know to do a lot of the stuff that we're going to be doing. We will get into some very advanced topics. We will get into stereo, we'll get into cryptomats, we'll get into compositing other footage, but we're gonna start from the very basics and I'm gonna skip all the stuff that you don't need to know for 360 video. With that being said, if you have any questions at all, whether they're Blender or 360 video related, whatever, make sure to let me know in the comments and I try to respond to everybody. So if I don't know the answer, I might be able to point you in the right direction. I'll put some helpful links and downloads in the description below, so make sure to check that out. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. So let's just go ahead and jump in. The first thing to do is to download Blender. So I'm not gonna go into detail how you do this, but if you go to blender.org, you can find it here. If you have any troubles, you can Google it. There's a million videos about how you do it. So download it and install it. When you first open Blender, it'll look something like this. There's a million things we could look at, but let's focus on one thing, adding an HDR world. So the first step is to get an HDR go to hdrihaven.com and then go to hdris. If you search for furry, you'll see this furry clouds. This is the one I'm using in this example. So go ahead and download this. Back in Blender, let's go ahead and drag this up. So if you look at this window here, if you hover your mouse, you can actually drag this up. So I'm gonna drag this up to, yeah, maybe a third of the screen. And then if you click on the top left button here, you can change the type you can change the mode over here. And we're looking for the shader editor. Click on shader editor. This is where we can change our materials. If we click on this cube, we can see the material. And you can also change the world. So if you look, we have object. And if you click on this here, you can go down to world. If use nodes is not checked, make sure to check it. And right now, this is what our world looks like. So now go to the place where you downloaded the HDR Click and drag it into Blender. If you don't have this background node, you can add it by going to Add and then searching Background. Or if you do Shift A, Search, you can get to it that way as well. If you push X, it will delete. And to connect these, you go from background to surface. Now, you can't just drag this image straight into the background. What you have to do is connect it to an environment texture. So if you click Shift A, Search, Environment, click on Environment Texture, connect color to color, and then under here, this little image icon, click, and you should see furry clouds. So now we have our HDR, we can delete this. So we have an HDRI texture going to the background and to world output, great. Okay, so this is set up properly, but where is the HDR? We don't see it anywhere. If we look over here, we have this properties window. If you don't see this window, you can click on the top left here and then navigate to properties and click on that. This very first tab is a very important one. It's the rendering tabs. It looks like a little, like a DSLR camera. The render engine, we're going to have to use cycles. And you can use CPU or GPU. In general, you're gonna to wanna to use GPU, especially if you have an NVIDIA. And now we have that set up. We, we're gonna talk about a lot of these other settings later, but for now, this is all we need to do. We need to make sure we're in cycles. And if we have a GPU, let's use GPU. Let me go ahead and save. So now we're in cycles. If we look up here in the top right, we have four different views, ways to view. We have wireframe, we have solid view, we have material preview. Material preview is basically this, this render engine Eevee, which is a real-time engine. Think of like Unity or Unreal. It's a real-time rendering engine. And then this last one is viewport shading, which is the rendered view. And if we're in cycles, it's going to be cycles rendering. For an EV, 
it's going to be EV rendering. But for 360, you have to use cycles. So again, just stay in cycles. The shortcut to switch between these is Z. So if you hold, if you push Z, you have solid material wireframe rendered. So Z goes and to go to the right, you get solid. Z go up, you get rendered. And if you do it fast, Z right, Z up, you can switch between those very quickly. So if we push Z and go up, we get the rendered mode, the same as pushing this one. And then now we have the HDR. Now, this doesn't look right. If we look at this, this, this pano, you can see that it's not blown out, right? So what's going on? Well, let's look at one other setting here in the render tab. At the render tab, if you go all the way to the bottom, you have color management. You can also search up here, color management, and then it'll bring you there. So if we go all the way to the bottom, color management, expand that. Device type is pretty much always gonna be sRGB. View transform, right now it's set to raw. Let's change this to, if we look at standard, this is what it looks like standard, but let's use filmic. Now you can see we're already starting to get detail back here. And then it's up to you what, what, what you wanna do here. If you wanna do filmic log, you can do that as well. Um, for me, I'm just gonna do filmic and I'm gonna do very high contrast. So I kind of want that blown out look. If you don't want that look, you can go down to medium contrast or low contrast, but I think I'm gonna go high contrast. We are starting to see the panorama. So let's go ahead and delete this cube. We don't need it. So if I push, if I click on this and you can see this orange highlight shows me that it's, it's selected. If I push X to delete, I can delete it. And now we have this camera in our scene. If you don't have a camera, then you can add one. So if I push X to delete the camera, we'll just pretend you don't have the camera. The main shortcut I want you to remember from this tutorial is F3. So F3 will bring up this search menu. And the search menu, you can search for all sorts of things, lots of commands in Blender. But if you search for camera, you can see it'll add a camera. So now I can add this camera here. It also tells you what the shortcut is, Shift A. So if I push Shift A, then we get all the different options here. And we can go down to camera and add a camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. So you can see if we have four cameras, then which one is being rendered? Well, there's, there's a few different ways we can see this. See how this triangle is dark black? That's the camera that's being rendered right now. You can also see it up here. If this is selected, this one is going to be rendered. If we wanna change it to camera one, we can click here to change it to camera one. For now, I'm gonna delete these other cameras. We don't need them. And I don't want you to be confused. We have one camera. To switch into the rendered view to see what the camera's seeing, we can push zero on the number pad and that'll bring us into the camera view. And we can see, okay, this is one by one and it's not a panorama. So how do we change that? So there's a few things we need to do. If we come up here, we have the render tab is the, the first one. The scene properties is the second one. The scene properties is where you can change the resolution and you can change a lot of other things, the, the format, etc. So right now we're just looking at the resolution. So let's do 4096 and then press tab to go to the next one by 2048, enter. Okay, so now we have the right settings. It's two by one, echo rectangular, but we're not seeing a panorama in here yet, and that's okay. This next button here, render region, let's go ahead and turn that on since we're here. You can see what it does. All, basically, it just crops out everything else so you only see what's being rendered. The shortcut for this is control B, and that gives you this, this uh, cursor. If you just wanted to see this section, you could do Control B, and then it'll just show you this section. You can do Control Alt B to clear. Control B, select the entire frame, and it'll render just that frame. Okay, so now that's set up. Now if we select our camera, it's important that it has to be selected because if you look down here, 
depending on what you have selected, you'll have different options. If you have the light selected, you'll have a, an option for light. If you have the camera selected, you'll have a, an option for camera. So with the camera selected and in the camera tab, the very first option type, we're going to choose panoramic. And then the next option, we're going to choose agro rectangular. So now we're rendering 360. Now the horizon's off, and this is an easy fix. If we go back to camera, and if we open up this sidebar, I call it the, the in menu, because if you press in on the keyboard while you're in the viewport, it'll open up this menu. Now with this camera selected, we can change the transform rotation and scale of this item. So if I had the light selected, I could move the location of the light. If I have camera selected, I can choose, I can move the location or the rotation of the camera. So these are just numbers you need to know. If I, if I come out of this view, if I push zero on the number pad to get out of the rendered view, we can see this, this camera's tilted down. So rotation X should actually be 90. So now it's pointing straight. Y should be zero. And these two never need to change. So you can go ahead and lock these. That way you don't accidentally change them. And now we can change the rotation just by using Z. So if we wanted to reorient this to be seeing the city, we can use do it from here. So the last step here would be to render. If we go to render, render image, I'm going to zoom out. You can see that we are rendering now. So that's it for this tutorial. It's very basic, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how to get started in Blender and how to set up the HDRI world we're going to be building on this, so make sure, if you don't understand this, make sure to ask in the comments, and I will try to help you understand whatever you can. In the upcoming tutorials, we'll look at adding photogrammetry, we'll look at adding models, we'll talk about navigating in the viewport, useful shortcuts, we'll eventually talk about 3D, we'll talk about cryptomats, so there's a lot to cover, and I hope you're excited for this series. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.